back, WX Garage. Oh, Kevin's back. Uh, another video. So uh, our last video we did was the wheel fitment guide. And probably besides wheel fitment questions, we get questions on how do I mod my WRX? What do I do first? Can I do this, this, and this before I do this? Or should I do this, this, and this before this? So we get a lot of questions. Now between both of us yeah. from researching on forums, asking questions, talking to tuners, we have a pretty good knowledge of what you should do. Now this doesn't mean that you have to do it this way and in a specific order, but there is an order that you should do to protect your engine. Now, if you don't care and you want to just throw everything on and just you know go for it, you can, but I would rather do it as safe as possible because you know, if this is your daily driver, you, you want to make it, you know, at least somewhat safe. Not everyone has the luxury of having a daily driver yeah, and another car, so. Yeah. Um, for, I'd say 90% of the people that have these kinds of cars, these Subarus, if they have the STI or the WRX, and they are modifying them, I'd say 90%. These are your babies, these are your daily drivers, yeah. and if, if something goes okay. wrong with them, then you know, you're, you're out a lot of money, you're not able to get to work, etc. Yeah. So um, we're gonna talk to you guys today about what the best way, uh, the best ways you can modify your car and the best ways to keep it safe. Yeah, the best way to modify safe it safely. Yeah, and keep your, your wallet nice and full. Okay. Yeah, so. exactly. And also these cars get a stick for being unreliable. And I think mostly it's because people aren't doing it the right way. Yeah. This isn't, you know, a car that has such a built motor or such a built transmission. You can just throw things on and drive it on a stock tune or just get it tuned once in its life and it's good to go. It's just, they're not, they're just not built that way. And you have to know that ahead of time before you go into it. Um, I had the old uh, motor, I had the EJ motor on my 20, uh, 2009 WRX. That motor was even more finicky than this one is with like tuning and stuff. And I didn't want to tune on it and it rode like shit. And I ended up driving one that had a tune and it was like totally, totally, totally different. So uh, let's go through um, what we want to do first. Yeah. All right, so some of the bad things about this car and what you need to know, cooling wise, these cars aren't really cooled properly. The intercooler, the top mount one is honestly kind of shitty. Uh, that's one thing that you're definitely going to have to change if you want to start modding out your car. Uh, also, uh, another big one is the TGV and EGR deletes that people do. They seem like a really good idea, but they actually just build up your engine with carbon and actually make your car run way worse. So that is an, uh, another one that you want to do for safety. Also, because these cars are in a boxer engine, oil is the most important thing that you can do to these cars. Oil changes as often as you can, 3,000 miles, 3,500, as often as you can with the best oil that you can. I use Motul, Kevin uses Motul. I would say most people use Motul. That is like basically the best oil that people have found and done research on. So along with that is an air oil separator, which you've probably seen them around. Cobb makes one, Perrin, IAG, tons of people make them. Those help really good because these do burn oil the way that the engine is set up because of the pancake engine, all the oil sits at the bottom. So the air oil separator helps with it not burning as much oil and also helps like the life of your car. Another thing that I see people do all the time and I hate it more than anything is when they put in a new intake, they don't get one with a box and they get like a short ram style intake where the intake is just sitting here. And it's, all it is doing is heat soaking and just collecting so much heat that you are just going to, it's so bad, it's so bad for these cars. Get one with a box. Whether it's a Grim Speed, I personally like the Grim Speed one, I think they make the nicest looking intake. It's got a gasket on it, it just definitely looks the best to me. That's the one that I'm going to run. You're gonna want an intake cover. You do not wanna run that thing without it. Uh, even if you're just gonna suck in so much hot air and then if you don't change your charge pipe on top of doing that, you're still just, it's just not going to run efficiently. And you really want these things to run as efficient as possible. Uh, spark plugs, you don't wanna cheap out on spark plugs. It seems, you know, silly that we even have to say it. I think the spark plugs for these, even the NGK Iridium Plus are, oh, they look very loud. Um, so spark plugs, what are they, 20 bucks for the, like the NGK ones? Or for the ones? set, it's about 45, 50 bucks. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the most important thing about spark plugs, um, you can, if you want to be the absolute most reliable, just get the OEM ones from Subaru. They are specifically gapped for our cars and they are supplied by NGK to Subaru. So yeah. you know they're coming from the right place, but you know their gapping's good. Um, 
Downside, it's like 120 bucks, I think, for a set from them. Um, if you wanna go aftermarket, or if you wanna go from a different supplier, stick with NGK, get the Iridium, get the OEM part number, and make sure you're gapping them. Don't get them from Amazon, get them from a reputable source because yeah. there, has, there has been a lot of information coming out about fake spark plugs. Well, um, Amazon specifically, yeah. The fake spark plugs, you know, they're not gonna destroy your engine, but you're definitely going to see some issues. Um, if one of them is randomly gonna stop working, you're gonna see dam drop, yeah. you're gonna see knock, you're gonna see misfires, yeah, it's just not worth it. So spend the extra 10, 20 bucks and wait a week of shipping, gonna get it yeah. from another, a good place. I just ordered mine, um, actually. So these are the NGK spark plugs you should be getting. This is what I got from Import Image Racing. Took a couple days shipping. Uh, they are awesome. Um, one thing that I have heard about identifying the right kinds of plugs, if you open these up, the legit ones are going to have a cardboard sleeve, just like this. Whereas a lot of the knockoffs come with plastic sleeves for some reason, um, not really sure why. Another good way to identify it from what I understand is this little crush washer. And the crush washer should stick even if you pull on it. With uh, aftermarket ones or the fake ones, the Chinese knockoffs or whatever, uh, this is gonna slide straight off. Um, you can also kind of tell just how good quality these threads are. Um, the print, the labels, everything's good, so. Yeah, I haven't, on the forms, it's like one of the things everyone's talking about right now. It's just the fake spark plugs off of Amazon. So those are some of the really bad things that I see that people do, probably the most often. The other one is probably the catalyst downpipe. It's probably the next biggest one that I don't understand why people do the catalyst down. Unless you're going to do the external wastegate with, you know, different headers. Yeah, if you're then going you can go all catalyst. out, you know, 500 wheel horsepower plus, you're, you're going you go catalyst, that's fine. But other than that, it's just the boost creep is going to destroy your car. You're going to notice you're not gonna notice really a power difference between if I had the same exact upgrades as Kevin was and I was catalyst, these cars would drive exactly the same. It's just, but his is gonna be a lot safer because he has a cat at down plate. A little bit more reliable. And yeah, know. exactly. If you have a catalyst one, you have to get emissions done. Like in Connecticut, we have to get emissions, not so much an inspection. But on my old car, it came with the catalyst down plate and I had to get emissions as soon as I bought it. And he was like, yeah, this isn't gonna fly. So I had to go and buy a new down pipe that was catted and I noticed it actually rode a lot better just from doing just from doing that. Cool. So let's I guess talk about numbers and this is a touchy subject. Just because for one, numbers mean a lot. When you're talking about raw horsepower numbers, everybody loves hearing the numbers. Like, oh you did these mods, I got a dyno day. What's your numbers? What's what's your horsepower? What's yeah. your torque? And the issue with that is is two things. One, if you're obsessed with numbers, you're going to be modding your car and getting your car tuned the wrong way. You're not tuning your car for reliability. You're going for, I want as much power as humanly possible. And it's not always going to be the most reliable unless you have like a built block or something like that. But yeah. with the OEM block, OEM internals, OEM, uh, the stock turbo, um, you want to make sure you are tuning for reliability and not absolute max power. And the difference between those could only be 10 horsepower, maybe, maybe yeah. you know, 15 right in that range. Just backing it off a tiny bit from the absolute best your engine can do with your parts yeah, is just going to be, just yeah. be safer. And if honestly, if you're looking for numbers, don't get this car. Yeah. This car, this, especially the 2015s, they're not drag racing machines. They're supposed to be track cars. They're supposed to be agile. They don't need, you know, a thousand horsepower, but it's supposed to be quick and agile compared yeah. to like, you know, like a Hellcat, just pure power and yeah. just speed. So numbers, don't be so focused on numbers. You want it to just drive as reliable as possible so you could drive it longer. Yeah. Who, you know, who cares if you could go, you know, a few miles an hour faster than me, but I could drive it every day and you can't. That's the difference, so. Yeah. The, the second part about chasing numbers is you have to remember, like you said, these are not, you know, these are not massive engines. They're two yeah. liter, four cylinder engines. They're the best bang for your buck for performance and driving feel. Uh, for all-wheel drive system for um, yeah. uh, miles per gallon is actually really good too for, for a performance driving like engine. A, an idiot. I'm yeah, still exactly. Like I'm yeah. over 25. Exactly. So, um, with that said, when you're chasing numbers, there's always going to be someone faster than you. So when you're tuning your car and putting aftermarket parts on, do what you want to do and don't compare yourself to others. 
if you're if you're doing a building a time attack car, sure, compare yourself. Yeah. But if you're just driving a, a daily car, just focus on what makes you happy and how yeah. you feel driving. Just the downpipe with my car, you know, I'm I'm pretty happy with what I have. I'm definitely gonna do more just because I want a little more power, a little more reliability. I'm gonna go with that dyno tune eventually. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm still, both Kyle and I are faster than 90% of the cars, 95% of the cars on the road. And that's a great feeling because you're able yeah. to keep yourself safe in traffic. If, if you're emerging or somebody cuts in front of you or you need to get out of the way of something, yeah. if you don't have that power available, then you know, it's just, it's not a very good feeling. So. Yeah. Real quick, we're gonna run through. There's are so there are some other videos um, about this out there. Smedia did a really good job explaining this, but we'll, we'll take a quick crack at it just so you guys can hear what we have to say. Um, the stages, uh, it's just the easiest way to yeah. say, hey, what stage is your car? Um, a lot of there's a lot of misconception about it, but let's get into it. Stage one uh, is talking about Cobb's OTS map in a state, just essentially a tune on your car without any aftermarket parts. Simple. Stage one plus is a tune with an intake. Do you need a tune for an intake? Yes. Yes. If you're putting yes. anything on your car <laughs> that, uh, that is connected to your drivetrain, sorry, you drive out your, 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 your motor, your engine, other than a cat back exhaust. I would say, honestly, you, it's easier to tell you what you don't need a tune for. Yes. A cat back or an axle back exhaust, you don't need a tune. Other than that, do I need a tune? Yes. Get a tune. Get a tune. Oh, I want to change my intercooler. Get a tune. Yeah. Charge pipe, tune. EGV TGR deletes, tune. Air yeah. oil separator, oh, yeah. to everything that you do, get a tune. Yeah. <laughs> so that's stage one plus. Um, stage two is just the downpipe or just the J pipe. That's what I have in my car with the OEM stock intake, stage two plus. Again, it's gonna be plus the intake. Um, this terminology mostly comes from Cobb's staged packages and a lot of other yeah. companies have adopted that. Um, cool. On top of that, you have um, stage three, which a lot of people are synonymous with when you do your intercooler. Um, you could go into cooler. This is you don't have to do each of these in succession, but normally when you're slowly adding power, that's your normal go-to. Some people do intake first. Some people do J pipe or, or down pipe first. Um, I went down pipe, and intake is coming next. Once you have your intercooler, you need to decide between top mount and front mount. Top mount, you don't have to cut your bumper. You don't have to reroute piping. Um, you might have to replace piping with some larger diameter stuff but you are going to see some very good reliability from a top mount. You are going to see some very good reliability from a top mount intercooler. Yeah, it's definitely um, gonna lower your some, temperature. Yep. It's gonna be safer to run than- And performance as well. Um, the issue if you are tracking your car, you are going to see some heat soak, just like the stock one. Not as much as you think, but definitely some heat soak. If you're looking for big raw power numbers, and you want that huge cut. What up? You want that huge, nice, open uh, intercooler in the front, you're gonna go for a front mount intercooler. Um, from what I've heard, brands-wise, for those, top mount, go for the Kana uh, Verticooler um, or Grimspeed. That's, 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 that's basically, it, basically it. For front mounts, uh, Perrin, ETS, or and Grimspeed. And Grimspeed, Grimspeed just came Grimspeed out with just their front mounts. And I'm, I'm gonna assume that the Grimspeed one is probably going to be the best. Yeah. They just they come out with amazing I think products. This, I think it's just their research. They just go the extra length and just yeah. make sure that every piece is perfect. Cool. Last couple things that are really common for these cars, before you start going for, you know, insane, you know, block builds and things like that, aftermarket turbos, the other bolt-on packages, the most common ones are TGV deletes, EGR unplug or EGR deletes, and lastly, boost controller. Before, yeah. after that, you're going to be modifying the engine more, you know, if you want to go methanol injection or if you want to do the, uh, the BRZ IVR manifold uh, replacement, the intake manifold, um, that's a lot more intensive and things like that. You have to work with cooling lines and whatever. But yeah. um, for the TGVs, you're adding reliability for cruising, reducing cruising knock, and you're opening up that, that uh, channel for where your uh, intake, uh, air intake channel is coming from. Um, if you have less restriction in there with removing that tumbler, the tumbler gas valves, um, removing those is going to open up that airflow and just make things 
easier and more reliable. It just makes it, makes it, it just makes it breathe better. Uh, ex exa exhaust gas return, that just, um, returning a flow of exhaust gases from the hot side back into the, 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 the intake side of your car, uh, which is just going to mean that it reduces emissions, but for performance car, you want fresh boosted air coming from your from outside yeah. of the car only into the engine. So um, you can just unplug that. Some people will put lock off plates on there. I don't think it's really necessary. Most people unplug those and yeah. you're fine. Just make sure duct tape or electrical tape over the connection so they don't get corroded and whatnot. It's also easier to undo if you ever need to part out. Yeah, or if you're putting your car back to stock. That's another thing. I recommend to save all your stock parts, especially if you know you're not gonna keep this thing for the rest of your life, which probably no one will. As soon as you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I want something else. I want something bigger. I want an SDI. Or I want to go up to something else. Oh, I want to get the new 2021. Yeah, get the new 2021. Yeah. Uh, see how that's gonna be. That way you can put it back to stock. That way you don't, you know, yeah. screw yourself. Last thing. Flex fuel, ethanol. Yeah. Two things. If you're going to do it, delicious tuning or cob. Don't it. get the Penguin <laughs> one. Don't get yeah, some that, that's Chinese it. brand flex fuel sensor. Great things about Bolt. Yeah. I personally would go with Cobb. They just have the best customer service. Um, people get theirs replaced pretty easily if something goes wrong with the sensor. But yeah. if you have flex fuel, if you have ethanol commonly available in your area, that is going to be the best reliability. Best bang for your buck. Best bang for your buck. It might hurt your wallet and your miles per gallon a little bit. You might have to fill up a bit more. But in a lot of places, ethanol is cheaper than normal gas anyways. Yeah, and so, if you're looking for power as quick as possible, yeah, definitely ethanol. We don't and really have it around get, here, otherwise we'd probably yes. have it already. Do not run ethanol with an off the map uh, off the shelf map. Don't get one of those E30 or E60 maps unless you have an extremely precise way to measure the exact ethanol content in your car. That being said, power and reliability, just pay the amount of money for the flex kit, which is an actual sensor, which is gonna go onto your fuel line. I think it's right here. It goes right here, um, which is your uh, coming off your uh, fuel pump. Flex sensor right here, it connects to your access port and you can actually read the exact amount of ethanol content going into your engine, being pumped into your yeah. cylinder. So that's the most reliable way and the, the most efficient way to do it. And you're, you're just not gonna blow up your engine that way. Um, ethanol is also great because it has less emissions than compared to normal uh, gasoline. You're actually supporting local businesses in the U.S. when you buy ethanol because it's coming from the corn industry, which yeah, is pretty cool. Basically, yeah, um, so that's good. And then lastly, cooling. Ethanol uh, really reduces the likelihood of knock, and I know a lot of people that'll run uh, one or two gallons of ethanol even on a 93 tune every time they fill up just to add that extra bit of knock protection. And then also yeah. you're looking at cylinder cooling just because it burns off at a lower temperature. Yeah, so you know, you're not getting as hot. So then if you do that, plus with your front mount or your top mount and your intake with an air box, you will be uh, definitely in a good spot. Okay. Rapid fire. Okay, what do you got for me? OEM. Yes. When, when you're even, going for- Maybe that's the question, they do the answer. Oil change. <laughs> yes, you need a new crust washer unless you have an aftermarket, uh, whatever. The so Fumoto, what is it? The Fumoto, Fumoto drain Fumoto valve or something drain. like that. That is the move, let me tell you. Yeah. That is the move. Don't get an aftermarket oil cooler. Don't fix what ain't broken. What about uh, coolant? Coolant, I would go also stock. Subaru, yep. the super coolant, or if I was going to change it, I would go to the Mishimoto. I think they they also have their, I think it's their super coolant or, or their super chill. Yep. Uh, their stuff is real good, and they also have the upgraded radiator if you ever wanted to upgrade the radiator, which is probably a good idea if you're yep. gonna do top mount, maybe upgrade the radiator and get a good, uh, get good some good cooling that way too. Cool. Airbox, the stock airbox. Uh, should I put a Canon air filter intake in there? Uh, no, I would go. I would go OEM. If you really wanted the 10 horsepower that bad, then just save your money and save up and just get an intake, and yeah. life will be better that way. Grimspeed actually has one now. Um, there's the only one I would really trust because they have the only yeah. ones that they put testing into. And they say that you don't need a tune, but even then, it's just such a little bit of an increase. It's not, worth it's not really worth worth the money, you know? You're just gonna be buying it, and then as soon as you're doing it, oh my God, I love how much faster it is. I want it to be even faster. Let me put a whole intake and you just wasted, you know, cool. wasted money. What else you got for me? Aftermarket intake, do you need a tune? Yes. Aftermarket downpipe, do you need a tune? Yes. 
Aftermarket Every, anything other than cat back. Other than a cat back or an axle back, just get a tune. Just get a tune. Uh, e -tune, it, tune. It doesn't matter if it's E-Tune or dino a Dino Tune, tune it doesn't matter. If you're gonna do things like not all at once, then I would probably recommend an E-Tune to get you through. And then at the very end, when you're like, this is it, I'm done. Then you go and get yourself a dyno tune with a pro tune and then it, you're, you're set. So yeah, access port definitely because that's what you need. Um, if you guys have any questions about the E-Tune process, um, I did talk about the differences between the off-the-shelf tunes, the E-Tunes and a pro tune on my last video. So I'll put that up in the link here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so tune is the most important and then it's just really cooling is the problem with these engines. They overheat and that's why the ringlins, that's why you blow the rings and piston for is because it's overheating. It's not because the engine just decided, screw you, thin rod through atmosphere. You know, same thing if you don't, if you have a catless downpipe, you're gonna overboost, you're gonna have yep. boost creep, then you're gonna overboost your car, it's gonna blow up, and you're gonna blame the Subaru when really it's your fault. Um, just like question. you said, boost controller, that way that won't happen. The boost controller will say, you know, yeah. really a more accurate way to measure boost. What white oil should you be running? I do the 5W30. 5W30. Um, if, if you're in anywhere in the country other than maybe Florida or Arizona, yeah, where it's the, hot, the, yeah, the lowest hot. temperature you're going to see is 65 throughout yeah, the year. Yeah, California, all those places. Then, then you can run 5W40, but if you're in anywhere else, 5W30. Yeah. Again, unless you have a stock, uh, a built block or something like that, yeah. stage two, stage three block. So. And then everything that you that you get, make sure you're getting name brand. Don't go on eBay. Yeah. Unless for anything appearance wise, absolutely. Front lift, Amazon all day. Cause you're gonna destroy this thing. Okay. Especially if you like the carbon fiber ones, you're gonna destroy it. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand the carbon fiber lift, you know. It, you know, just they look amazing. They look fantastic. I if don't it, trust if it's myself like a not show screaming. car, yeah. then yeah. Anything after you know, anything appearance wise, go as the cheapest thing that you could buy because it doesn't matter, you know? Cool. But for performance parts, Grimsby, Cobb, Perrin, Mishimoto. Name brand. Name brand. Yes. Stick really to Name those brand. those four, really. and IAG for anything. Uh, you know, when you get a little bit to that like next level, IAG for blocks, um, anything and like that. And the last thing we can say is, do your research, get second opinions. Yeah. Don't go on to one forum and get yelled at by a 60 year old guy yeah. who had a WRX 20 years ago. Yeah. Do your research, look at multiple sources, YouTube, you know, yeah. look for reviews online, look for people that are giving honest opinions and not just trying to defend what they purchased themselves. Yeah, and also people that haven't gotten anything like bought for them, someone that's yeah. sponsored by someone, we're not sponsored by anyone, so we really don't care. You know what I mean? We, we just want you guys to have the best. We want to give you guys our honest opinion with our experiences and yeah. basically try to give as much honest information out there so other people can modify their cars yeah. the right way. Go to Facebook, join as many 2015 plus groups that you can. I think I'm in five. Yeah. At don't this point. don't ask what kind of oil yeah, any don't, of the groups. Or, or no, when you <laughs> first go in, ask it because it's fantastic to see how, how much people Beans. blast you for it. Um, also, wherever you are, look for your local Team Subaru 15 group. Yep. Uh, if you're up here, it's gonna be the Northeast one. They have one basically for every state or area of a bunch of states. For our buddy out in Guam, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have, we'll meet we up with our, you soon. We have our one Guam guy. Yeah. Uh, but join the, the group. They have group, chat, group chats, and those are like real people that are in your area that you can say, hey, should I get X, Y, and Z, or what should I do? Um, another thing people ask is how, like in what order, you know, should I do things? Me personally, I think you start with the cap back or an axle back exhaust because that's the, a cheap option that at least sounds like you're going faster. It, you know, it sounds better and it makes it more fun to drive. Yeah. Personally, then I would do downpipe and intake. Whether you do one right before the other doesn't matter, but I would do downpipe, intake, exhaust, yeah. tune. And then you can do, I would then build from there and tune as you go. If you're going the other option, I, I do know some people that have only done suspension modifications. Uh, so they'll, they'll do control Basically arms, me. sway bars, me. end links, <laughs> coilovers, wheels and tires, and they'll just track the car that way. Yeah. Um, they, they'll, they'll probably run a, a couple extra gallons of uh, ethanol just to reduce knock. But yeah. uh, you can do that on the stock car pretty safely, just yeah. one or two gallons. Even if you have, couple, especially if you have the SDI, so. there's less of a need to yep do the performance stuff because it's already a little bit more set up to track. So at the end of the day, put the research in, get multiple join sources, groups. join yeah. some groups and talk about it and, and be open to learn. 
So yeah, and that's again, all we have. Just yeah. be safe. You know, try to make sure that you do your research. Get keep the stuff that's going to keep your car keep your safe. Baby safe. Yeah. The intake without an air box. That is like one of the biggest ones. It's like, just don't get it. Or they don't tune. They, they also leave. get waterlogged. That's the other thing. Yeah. You're gonna get heat soaked when it's hot and when it's raining, they're gonna get waterlogged and you're gonna get a dam drop. Yep. So you're gonna soak up your um, your uh, mask. Yeah. So, so be cool. safe. And uh, you should be all right. Yeah. At the end of the day- You should not, not blow up. Yeah, yeah, you should not blow up. But at the end of the day, it's a boosted car and basically every car that's boosted is going to blow up. That is just the nature of the game. You have to if know that going at, in. If it happens at 1,500 miles on the car, or if it happens at 150,000 miles on the yeah, car, that's your choice. And if yeah. you want to do the right, put the right car uh, parts on, tune it the right way, and maintain it the right way. Yeah, so. yeah. oil changes on time. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll close it out. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Uh, if we missed anything, leave it down in the, the comments. And this would be, uh, yeah, leave it down in the comments section. I don't know where else, yeah. anywhere else you'd, you'd leave it. <laughs> Send us a letter. Yeah. Send us a letter, pen put palace. some perfume on it, pen pal. Yeah, we, we, we can do uh, this. Any anyway, questions, so. just if you have any questions at all about anything in this video, just hit us up on Instagram. We, we both are signed into it, so we read it every time we get a message. Same thing with comments. I think we com we try to comment on every video yeah, that asks a question or even like, even if it's not a question, we try to at least like it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah. Please subscribe. We got a lot of cool stuff coming. I might be getting a new steering wheel maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. Um, you cool. might be going intake. Yeah, might be going, yeah. We'll yep. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you in the next one.